My name is Arlene Shipwood and I play second horn in the Saskatoon Symphony Orchestra. The second horn player is a supportive role. I support the principal horn player either playing parts that are slightly lower than hers or in unison, meaning the same notes, or sometimes I get a very short solo, usually in the low range of the French horn. Today, I'm here to talk to you about Beethoven and the history of the French horn. But first off, what we're going to do is learn how to buzz. So every brass instrument is the same. We, we have to buzz our lips and here's how we do it. Say this with me. I am. Let's try that. I am. Now let's do it for four seconds. I am. Great. For higher notes, we have to buzz faster. And for lower notes, we have to buzz slower. Now, the history of the, the French horn. Let's start with early man. Early man used to use animal horns or conch shells like mine to signal each other. We do the same premise. And I'm going to say I am against the cut end of my conch shell. So what I've done is I've cut off the end and sanded it down. I have to say thank you to my friends at the Western Develop Museum for giving me access to their shocks to do this. So here we go. So this is one of my larger conch shells and my smaller one is going to be a little bit higher sound. From there, early man figured out how to make metal and learned to bend it. So we bent it into two different shapes. An oval shape that the trumpets used and became bugles and those were used for signaling armies. The French horn was the circular shape. And these were used for signaling hunters, especially when they were riding. And they would be signaling them to turn left, turn right, or maybe we're going to stop for lunch. They took these large circular instruments in the 1600s. We learned how to curl it down a little bit more. And into the 1700s, they bent it a little bit more until the point that they could get their hand in the bell. And this is where we went from the field to the orchestra pit. At this point, when we figured out we could put our hand in the bell, it melted the sound slightly from those very raucous sounding hunting horns. And we could also change the notes a little bit. Now the French horn has many different notes that can play on it. And this is what was so cool about these natural horns. They already had a whole set of notes they could play with just your lips and your ear. without really trying. Now, in the time of Beethoven, this was the French horn that they would have used for his nine symphonies the, and the various chamber works. And the one piece he wrote for solo French horn, this was called the Beethoven Sonata. It was a piece written for horn and piano. This is the opening of the Beethoven Sonata played on the horn. It was meant for the natural horn. <laughs> Was just playing on is approximately 13 feet long. Now this is my garden hose horn. I can demonstrate it to throw it across the room so you can see how long it is. So this is slightly over 13 feet because of the uh, size of the tubing right here. Here's the Beethoven Sonata play on my garden hose horn. <laughs> the valve and that was the precursor to the modern horn. Valves were used instead of having one French horn that would have several different uh, crooks or slides on the back that we would change depending on what scale we were playing in. Now we have these valves that take that place. When I press this down it lets air into this tube, this lets air into this tube and this tube. 
and I have what's called a double horn. It has an extra thumb trigger. When I press it down, it chops off almost a meter of tubing and makes it much easier to play high notes and low notes. So this French horn, in effect, has 16 bell combinations. So now, what does the Beethoven Sonata sound like on this horn? So you're going to see me actually pressing the keys this time for the Beethoven. Sonata. I hope you've enjoyed your tour of the history of the French horn. Any questions, you can contact me through the Saskatoon Symphony Orchestra. Thank you, and have a great day.